In today's video, we have several news updates, including some more information on the NHL's return to play in the Hub City selection, as well as some offseason rumors focusing on the Bruins, the Oilers, and the Calgary Flames. We'll jump into all the latest news coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot to cover today. First up, let's kick things off with a few quick little news updates. First up, we have some more information and updates on the NHL's return to play in the Hub City selection. The NHL did announce that it's moving forward with the number of players that are going to be allowed to work out during Phase 2 in one setting. Currently, right now, the NHL has six players at a maximum per group uh, allowed at NHL facilities at a time. And that number is going to be changing as of tomorrow from six players up to 12. So that's certainly going to make it a lot easier for players to be getting ice time and moving things along. Uh, as we mentioned as well before, the NHL training camps are expected now to be two weeks when we hit phase three instead of three weeks. So obviously getting these players on the ice and getting more training in will certainly help with that uh, for sure. Of course, Tampa Bay, though, right now has their facility closed, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, due to uh, some COVID-19 testing and some positive results. So I'm not sure how uh, this is going to impact them and when they're going to be able to get back at it. But I'm sure once the facility has been completely cleansed and sanitized, the remaining players players um, might be able to resume i'm not sure who exactly was the positive cases or um, who needs to isolate or anything like that but obviously they're impacted in a whole different way but other nhl teams will be able to move forward here with the number of players on the ice at one time now, as we mentioned before as well, we had an update on the hub cities indicating that the 10 original cities that were mentioned by Gary Bettman as being considered were narrowed down to six, but we didn't have a lot of details as to who was in or out except that all three of the Canadian cities, which are Vancouver, Edmonton, and Toronto, are still all in the mix. But we did get confirmation today that both Minnesota and Columbus are officially out of the running. So with all three of the Canadian cities being involved, that means that there's three in the U.S. still in the mix. Vegas has been rumored to be near the top, uh, the leading contender, I guess, for an American city. Uh, so you know they're still in. That makes four. Uh, if you look at the next two, my guess is that it's likely Chicago and probably Los Angeles. That appears to be just the best guess based on all the reports and rumors that we're seeing around that are still being considered. So that would indicate that cities like Dallas and Pittsburgh very well could be out as well, although that has not been totally confirmed. Uh, and we should have some more information uh, on that being voted on here. Hopefully later this week, uh, the NHL and the PA need to vote on the phase three and four safety protocols as well as the hub cities. Uh, so that should all be here be coming soon. They, they also announced as part of that return to play plan that NHL players uh, who have expiring contracts and need to have work visas extended, all their contracts are being pushed to October 31st, but that is also pending a player vote by the PA as well as part of the whole package here of the return to play. So obviously some players need to have either work permits or work visas to work in Canada or the United States, depending on what country they're from, especially players that are from abroad. Uh, so clearly that may makes a big deal uh, for them to be able to play uh, throughout the summer if their if their permits or visas are technically expired. So they're working out an arrangement to have all that extended to October the 31st. Quick injury update as well. The Vegas Golden Knights more than likely are going to be without youngster Cody Glass when they return to play for their playoff format. Uh, Glass recently had knee surgery not that long ago, uh, and he's likely will not be recovered in time to participate so that could be a big blow i mean obviously he's a young player wasn't playing a huge role for vegas as somebody who would have clearly been able to benefit from a playoff format here so uh, unfortunately he likely won't be in Longtime NHL player Chris Thorburn's officially announced his retirement. Of course, he played for a variety of teams, including the Winnipeg Jets, St. Louis Blues, and a few others. I believe he played just over 800 NHL games. He was technically a part of the Blues when they won the Stanley Cup last year, although he certainly played a pretty minor role, didn't really see a, a whole lot of ice time. But uh, Thorburn, certainly a well-respected longtime player, uh, will now officially move on into retirement and one other quick note as well before we jump into the offseason rumors philadelphia flyers goaltender carter hart has officially changed agents uh, which is certainly an interesting note uh, he's entering the final year of his entry-level contract so this summer he will be eligible for an extension from the flyers 
he's now joined the Bobby Orr hockey group for his agency to represent him. So I guess we'll see if that really means much of anything. Clearly, he had more confidence in them to negotiate a better deal for him once his entry-level deal comes to an end here at the end of next season. Now, as I mentioned, we have some off-season uh, trade and free agent talk I want to take a look at here, focusing on three teams, and I want to start with the Edmonton Oilers. Now, of course, as we know, the Oilers are going to have some tough decisions to make like many NHL teams this offseason when we finally get there. Uh, clearly, they have some players who are going to need new contracts. They have a lot of money tied up in their top superstars. Uh, a lot of debate whether a guy like Ryan Nugent Hopkins gets extended. Uh, does he play out the final year of his deal? How does that work out? Because clearly, he's a pretty important player for them as well. Uh, but one area that's certainly proven to be a question mark for them moving forward is at number three center spot and maybe a little bit more in depth on the wing although some of the younger players have proven to kind of help with that a little bit here as the season went on. But the number three center spot could be Ryan Nugent Hopkins, except that he could prove to be an expensive option in that role. Of course, Nugent Hopkins has filled in as a left winger as well in the top two lines, often playing with McDavid or Drysaddle. I know there was a period of time uh, this year he did that as well and certainly fit in quite nicely. So if they could have another number three center, this allows them to load up a little bit more in their top six. And one name that's come up as a potential free agent target for them would be veteran center iceman Carl Soderberg. Now, he's currently with the Arizona Coyotes. Very likely doesn't return there. The Coyotes are probably one of the worst cap situations around the NHL. Uh, likely going to have to let a few free agents go, him being one of them. Uh, he's 34 now. He'll be 35 when next season gets underway. Still a relatively productive player for a third line, you know, bottom six kind of guy who can kill penalties. Uh, still give you 30 to 40 points. Uh, you know, pretty good on... Pretty good on defensively and in the face-off circle, so might make sense for them to take a real hard look at him. And of course, he played in the NHL for quite some time. Uh, he's been a pretty steady uh, center iceman during his NHL career. Might not come with a very expensive price tag, which is a good part. It might fit their cap needs. Uh, it would certainly be, like I said, a, a long time player with a lot of experience. So add a veteran in there who could be a good mentor for some of the younger Oilers forwards uh, and might prove to be a solid option to really uh, increase their depth down the middle. Clearly, they got one of the best one-two punch, if not the best one-two punch in the NHL with uh, McDavid and Drysaddle, but you do need to have a little bit of insulation there so that they don't have to play in so many defensive situations that can get more offensive starts. Could be a good spot for him. So I guess we'll see, but there is talk that he could be a player the Oilers are taking a look at. Now, let's jump over next to the Boston Bruins. Now, if you caught my video earlier today, we put up a video talking about a possible Boston Buffalo trade featuring superstar Jack Eichel. Of course, it was just based on a discussion video uh, based on an article uh, by Joe Haggerty of NBC Sports talking about what it would take for the Bruins to acquire the elite center iceman from Buffalo. Of course, he's from Massachusetts uh, and certainly has you know a lot of ties to the area, so it would make sense that if he ever left Buffalo that Boston would probably be his preferred choice of destination to go to. Uh, and the article just discussed what it would take. And so we went over that in the video and took a look at uh, what that could look like and if it made sense for both sides. But one of the key players that we ended up talking about in that video, because a lot of the future of the Bruins kind of dictates here what they do, it was Tory Krug on defense. Now, of course, part of that trade package involved them inquiring a, a top winger, a top prospect, and a defenseman from Boston for that trade if they were to do that. And I indicated I didn't think the Boston Bruins should trade a defenseman like a Carlo or a McAvoy because they could be at risk of losing Tory Krug as well. And if they were to lose Krug through free agency and trade one of their younger guys like Carlo or McAvoy as well, that would really put them in a, a really big hole in the blue line, especially with Chair getting older. You don't know how much longer he's going to be there. You could have three of your top six defenders gone just like that. And even though they'd still be a really strong team up front with Jack Eichel joining them in the mix, uh, they'd have problems on the other side and would they really be a better team it's certainly debatable that they may not be uh, but Tory Krug is certainly a, you know a, a player who's going to prove difficult for Boston to re-sign here there's been very quiet on the contract front and this dates back to even before the NHL pause I understand why things are quiet right now because clearly NHL teams are waiting for a little bit more direction a little bit more certainty on what the cap is going to be for next year before they start signing contracts we've only really seen pretty small time deals entry level contracts short-term cheap deals for uh, you know some uh, secondary players or it's really all we've seen during this NHL pause we haven't really seen a whole lot of, uh, of bigger time deals 
really materialize because everything's kind of on hold right now uh, as we wait more information. But uh, even before that, earlier in the year, uh, Krug's mentioned numerous times he'd love to stay in Boston, like to work out a deal, uh, but there's really no talk on the contract front. And given the situation with Boston, like many teams, like I said, with the cap, he is going to prove to be very challenging. Now, of course, they not only need to sign Krug, because uh, I think he's a really big part of their blue line, really helps drive a lot of the offense, but they also have some RFAs to sign as well, including forward Jake DeBrusque. Uh, they got Yero Halak looked after. That was one deal the Bruins did get looked after earlier. Uh, they get him extended for another year. So they have their goalies in place, um, and they do have, obviously, Chera as a UFA. I imagine he comes back another year, at least as of right now. That's what things are looking like. So Tory Krug could prove to be very, very difficult for Boston to sign. And if he does leave Boston, where would he end up? I know we've seen number numerous times, but he may be going home to Michigan and Detroit, but not really sure that would be appealing to him given the fact that they're you know, so early into a rebuild. But I have no doubt that there will be no shortage of interest in this player. He likely could command seven or $8 million per season on a longer term contract. Now, of course, one thing that some people might say, which is probably true to an extent, is that the free agent market likely is going to be depressed a little bit. Players might not be getting the money that they were anticipating before all this happened because of all the lost revenue, but numerous agents have indicated they feel even though that will be the case to an extent that a lot of the top talent are still going to get paid somewhat close to what they were expecting before everything happened. Uh, just because they're obviously teams are going to be looking to you know get into the playoffs they're going to be looking to make improvements to really improve their own financial situations as well and they obviously don't want to lose out on an opportunity to grab a top free agent so clearly a guy like Krug likely still gets paid pretty close and he really is a real possibility he could leave Boston but given the lack of talk and the lack of focus on the contract for Tory Krug really the entire year what are your thoughts on the possibility of Krug staying in Boston does he resign or be a free agency and if so where does he end up now next up I want to take a look at the Calgary Flames and the possibility that we could see them go after a big time free agent and also make a big time trade to make room uh, to, for that said free agent to sign a new contract and what I'm talking about is the possibility that they've been linked to uh, free agent Taylor Hall who, who's with Arizona is another player who's going to be one of the top free agents out there likely expected to kind of hold a similar situation to how John Tavares handled his free agency a couple of years back uh, likely narrow it down to a handful of teams set up meetings and uh, really have some in-depth talks and then make a decision on what he feels is best based on all the offers when we get there so i fully expect taylor hall to reach free agency i can speak with other teams and there's been a lot of talk and a lot of links to Hall wanting to go to Calgary, uh, where he was born. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about Calgary being very interested in him, that they've tried to make an acquisition on him before as well. Uh, when he was traded out of New Jersey, there were some talks that the Flames were in on that as well. Uh, so it's certainly a, a situation where there's been mutual interest, or at least there appears to be uh, in the past. So it makes a lot of sense that it could happen again. And there's also been a lot of talk that the Calgary Flames could consider kind of blowing up their core team right now if they have lack of success in the playoffs yet again and they could see one of their big time players get traded out kind of change things up because clearly the flames have had some good regular seasons but they're not getting the job done in the playoffs they're really not getting that long-term sustained success to really be closer to being a contender and it would make sense that maybe a big trade to shake things up could be just what the team needs and then maybe Johnny Gaudreau could find himself traded if the Calgary Flames don't have success in the 2020 NHL playoffs now some people think that the Flames might hold off uh, a year to do this because the 2020 playoffs are not really your typical format uh, teams are coming in all together different it's a whole different 2014 format they've had a big break going into training camp everything is unique about this so that the obviously the team ownership management etc might be willing to cut them a little slack if they don't get the job done this year but maybe one more year and then they'd make a drastic trade but the big part of this that's unique, though, is that they have an opportunity to go after Taylor Hall this summer, and without moving out some substantial money, there's just no way that's going to happen. They'd have to trade out a player like a Johnny Gaudreau or a Sean Monaghan or somebody who's making big-time money. I think Matthew Kachek would be certainly a little bit more untouchable than either of them would be. He's kind of become the team leader, in my opinion, slightly younger, uh, becoming just as productive, if not more productive in a lot of ways, uh, and really, like I said, really kind of becoming the team's leader in many facets. So uh, could Johnny Gaudreau find himself moved out of Calgary if indeed the Flames stumble again in the playoffs? And where would he go? I mean, he's been linked to teams like New Jersey and Philadelphia for quite a while because he's from that area uh, obviously I don't really see Philly having a need for a Gaudreau player right now 
New Jersey, I, he could certainly be a big help there because they're going through a rebuild. Uh, I'm not sure how they would feel about that. I think they have other areas of the team they might want to address first, but I guess there are uh, some situations with that that kind of make sense. In other articles today, as well stating a case that Goudreau would be a good fit in Carolina. And I also saw another article uh, putting out a pretty good case that he might be a good fit with the Islanders, but I think that one personally, I think would be very tough to do. They've got a lot of money tied up uh, and certainly and what would go back the other way. I think the main reason the Flames would trade Goudreau at this point is if they could sign Hall. Um, and so they're not going to want to take back a lot of money. So that would certainly make things complicated for a team like the New York Islanders for sure. But uh, there's certainly lots of teams that would have interest in a player like Goudreau. He's been very productive. He's an offensive dynamo. Uh, he certainly doesn't have uh, the trade protection in his contract like a lot of players do. So it's a little bit easier to move him right now. Um, so obviously Brad Tree Living in the Flames would have some flexibility if they decided to make a bold move like that. It's something that's been coming up here for the last year or more with the Flames wanting Hall, possibly trading Gaudreau. Be fun to see them play together, but doesn't look like that's quite possible. It looks like if Hall comes in, Gaudreau would have to go out to make the room. Uh, at least that's what it looks like right now. Your thoughts on the Calgary Flames potential offseason moves? Do you see a big trade coming like a Johnny Gaudreau deal if they stumble in the playoffs? And would they do that to make room for signing Taylor Hall and land one of the top free agents in the 2020 free agent class? Let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye.